So for problem 30 here, we are asked to find all the six trig functions. Um, but to do that, we need to look at our constraints. So it says that sine is 2 over 5 and the angle is in the second quadrant. So if I were to draw this picture here and me being in the second quadrant, that means my x is negative and my y is positive. If I were to draw a triangle, my angle coming out, I can form a right triangle. Um, given that, I know what sine is. So sine typically is my, um, in a coordinate system, is y over r, or the radius. So my sine here is 2 over 5. That tells me that my y value here is 2, and my radius here is 5. Now, I want to make sure that the sign is correct. Now, remember, the radius is always positive. The y value here should also be positive. It's the x value that needs to be a negative number. So whatever I get for x, I need to make sure it's negative. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these numbers into the Pythagorean theorem, so that way I can figure out my x value. So the Pythagorean theorem on a coordinate system is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I don't know what x is, so I'll leave that as just a variable. My y here is 2, and my r here is 5. If I were to work this out, this would be 4 equals 25. Move the 4 over, and the side would be 21. I have to take the square root of both sides. 21 doesn't break down into anything other than prime numbers like 7 and 3. So I'm going to keep 21 under a root. So this is negative root 21 for my x value. From there, I can find all six trig functions. So I have sine, which is actually they gave me what sine was. So I'll just write 2 over 5. For cosine, that's going to be negative root 2, negative root 21. Sorry, I didn't mean to say 2, negative root 21 over my 5, which is my radius. Tangent is going to be my y over my x. So that's 2 over negative root 21. So I do need to rationalize this one. So I'm going to multiply root 2 on e1 on the top and bottom. So this would be 2 root 21 over 21. I can't seem to uh, simplify 2 and 21 on top and bottom, so I'll leave it as it is. So I have the top. I have the bottom, so I have sine, I have cosine, I have tangent. Now I'm ready to find cosecant, so all the reciprocals. So for cosecant, it's the reciprocal of sine. So if I were to just flip this guy, this would be 5 over 2. Secant is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So this is negative 5 root 21. So I'm going to put the root on the bottom now and the 5 on top. So I do need to rationalize with this one. So multiply the top and bottom by root 21. And this would give me 21 on the bottom and negative 5 root 21 on top. And I can't reduce that any further. So here's my cosecant. Here's my secant. I'm ready to find cotangent. So if I take this here, the tangent was 2 over root negative 21 to begin with. If I were to just flip it and take a look, there's nothing much that I can reduce from it. So this would be my final answer since I don't have a root in the denominator anyways. So there are all my six trig functions. In the next problem, we are given the constraint that secant is equal to 3 and sine is a negative number since sine is less than 0. So we are not given the quadrant this time. We are given kind of a condition statement that will help us figure out which quadrant. So sine is negative based on this information. And we know that secant here is positive 3. So let's draw a picture here. Now, um, if we kind of just follow 
that term where if I draw this to the side here, all students take cash. If we follow this here, um, sine is negative. So sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So sine is negative in these two quadrants. So it's either in quadrant um, three or quadrant four. But we can see here that secant is positive and secant is related to cosine and cosine is positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So that means the fourth quadrant here is going to be the winner um, since secant needs to be positive. So we're definitely in the fourth quadrant. So if I were to draw a triangle that comes out, it looks like I have secant, but secant is not a fraction, so I'm going to put it over 1 to make it a fraction. And just as a reminder, secant is a reciprocal of cosine so cosine is x over r, so secant is r over x. So that tells me that the 3 here is the radius and the 1 here is the x value. And I don't know what y is, so I'm about to find that out. But whatever y is, I know that y has to be a negative since we're in the fourth quadrant where x is positive and y is negative. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Plug in my x, which is 1, square it, y, five, uh, 3 gets squared, so this would be 1 plus y squared equals 9. If I subtract over the 1, I have 8. Take the square root of 8. Um, 8 breaks down into 4 and 2. 4 breaks down into 2 and 2, so that's a pair. So this means that my um, y value here would end up being 2, the pair that came out, and this leftover 2 goes back in the root. So my y value is 2 root 2. Okay, so what they want from us is all six trig functions. So I now know that x is 1, um, the radius is 3, and y is negative root 2 over 2. So I'm ready to find sine, which is y over r, the radius, cosine, which is x over the radius, and tangent, which is always y over x. So uh, my y value here is negative... 2 root 2 and my radius here is 3 and I can't simplify this here so I'll leave it as it is. Um, cosine is x which is 1 and my radius is 3 so 1 over 3. My tangent is my y value which is negative 2 root 2 over my x value which is 1. So if I were to simplify the tangent one here the dividing by 1 is just redundant it'll just end up being itself, so negative 2 root 2. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find the reciprocal. So cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. So I, if I were to flip that fraction, that would be 3, negative 2 root 2. So I'll just multiply the top and bottom by root 2 to try to get rid of that root. And so that would lead me to, um, oops, I think I forgot the 2 there. That would lead me to 3 root 2. The two twos multiply to give me 2. But 2 times negative 2. So I'm basically saying there's 2 times um, 2. So negative 2 times 2. So I'm saying that when I multiplied these two roots, I got a 2. If I multiplied the negative 2 with it, I get negative 4. So this is 3 root 2 over negative 4 for cosecant. For secant, I would have to flip this 1 over 3. So 3 over 1 is just 3, which is what I had before um, in the beginning of the problem. And then the next one here is cotangent, which is the reciprocal of 1 over negative 2 root 2. So I would multiply the top and bottom by root 2. 
So that'd be root two on the top. Um, like I said, these two root twos will multiply to give you two. So two times negative two is negative four. And that would be my answer. So the next problem here is problem 33. Let me see if I can shrink this down a little bit. Now this is a story problem. And it says there's a foot long ladder leaning against the side of a house that reaches 12 feet up on the side of the house. So um, I'm imagining right now, here's the ground, here's the building or the house. And here is my ladder, which is 16 feet. And um, I know that this side here is 12 foot, the building um, it says reaches 12 feet up on the side of the house. And then it wants to know what angle. So this angle that makes the ladder with the ground. So this is the ladder and this is the ground. All right. So to figure out this part here, um, what I notice is that with this angle, I have the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So if you have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, you can use tan um, sign here. So sine is going to be 12 over 16. And from here, I want to use the inverse trig to help try to get the angle by itself. So if I were to use the inverse sine, this would cancel. Theta comes down, but I need to take the inverse um, sine uh, for 12 and 16. So if I were to do that and plug this in the calculator, so I have GeoGebra open for my scientific calculator, which I will be uh, trying to type in this equation, sine inverse. So to type in sine inverse, you're going to use the keyboard on here and find sine. And then you need the inverse button, so you'll click on that. But to, do, to get the inverse here, you have to click on sine and click in like in between the parentheses so or uh, before the parentheses and then click on the inverse and then you would have the inverse sign. And in the parentheses, I need a 12 over 16. So there's a fraction button down below this button and I'm gonna just type in 12 and put 16 in the denominator. And so there it is in degrees. If you don't get the same answer as me, um, I'm going to pause the video. Uh, make sure you change it to um, degree settings in the calculator. If you don't get the same answer as me and you get this weird decimal, you might be in radian. So make sure you check that. So in this case, I get my angle to be equal to, I'm just going to round to a few decimal places here. I'll just do three decimal places. So 48 degrees and 59, or 5090, 590, 590 as my angle. So that's it for that problem. And just in general, we use inverse functions to help us find angles. Um, this next problem is a little bit tougher. Uh, if you read the story, it says the pilot of an airplane is flying at 12,000 feet sight, a water tower, and the angle of depression to the base of the tower is 25. What is the length of a uh, line of sight from the plane to the tower? So a lot of information going on here, but let's explain a few vocabulary words. So this is saying, what is the length of line of sight from the plane to the tower. So I'm going to draw an airplane here. Um, you might make fun of my drawing, but that's okay. So let's say that this is the plane. This is like the tail end of it. And this is like the front end. There we go. That looks kind of like a plane. And then you have the tower. Um, it looks like you have a water tower somewhere here. And when we're talking about li line of sight, this is this would be the line of sight. So it's asking what is the length for the line of sight. And let's see what else do we know. It says the pilot of the airplane is flying 12,000 feet sight of the water tower. So 12,000 feet sounds like that's the height from the water tower. So I bet that makes a right triangle. So 12,000 feet high. 
And then it says the angle of depression to the base of the tower is uh, 25 degrees. Okay, so let's talk about what does it mean to be an angle of depression. Um, that's speaking like if your plane was flying straight. It's not very straight. Let me do that again. So if your plane was flying straight, the angle of depression is how far it dips down or the line of sight, how far it dips down. So it's referring to this angle being 25 degrees. So um, we can assume that this, you know, this length is going to hit the ground parallel. So this could be a right triangle here. And we're trying to figure out this length right here. So I want to know what is the hypotenuse of this right triangle because that represents the length of the site of line. Okay, so thinking about how to do this here, I know what this angle is. Um, and if you guys have taken geometry, you might notice that this line is parallel to this line, the ground of the triangle. So if two lines are parallel with a transverse line that cuts through it, then this angle is also the same as this angle over here. So it's the idea like if you have two lines that are parallel and a transverse line that goes through it, if this angle is uh, like opposite ends, then they're going to be equivalent. Or if, if that doesn't make you comfortable, then just find this angle. Um, so this is 90 degrees. 90 minus uh, 25 is um, 65 degrees. And so you would know that this side's 65 degrees, this is 90, and then this would be 25 um, because these both have to add up to be 90 degrees. So there's many ways you can do this problem. But let's take a look at what we have. So I know that this angle here is 25, and I know this side is opposite, and this side's the hypotenuse. So if I have the opposite and the hypotenuse using this angle here, I can use sine. So sine of 25 degrees is equal to my opposite, which is 12,000, over my, let's call this guy x. So x is what I'm trying to solve, which is the length of sight. If I want to solve this out, just think of this as any algebraic equation. You have a fraction on the side, and... Um, you need to try to get x by itself. So what we can do is try to multiply this side by x to cancel off this side's x from the denominator, but I have to multiply it to the other side. So now this is 12,000, and we have sine 25 degrees. And if I want to get this x by itself, notice how the x is sitting next to the sine like it's multiplying. So I can divide off sine 25 degrees. So I have to divide it onto the other side. So this cancels out. So x is equal to 12,000 over sine 25 degrees. So I can plug this into the calculator to figure out what that is going to be. Make sure you're in um, degree mode when you type this in. So um, when I type it into my calculator, let's see what we get. So I'm going to grab my camera here. So for this problem, I have 12,000 that is in the numerator. So I'm going to make this a fraction. And then I'm going to put sign in the denominator. So there's a sign button down here. And I'm going to stick in 25 degrees. So I'm just going to type in 25 degrees. And then there is my number. So trying to zoom in here so you guys can see the number. It's a little bit blurry, but I'll write it out big. Um, so I get 28394. I'll round to also um, three decimal places, so 419. And this here looks like it's, um, I'll shrink this down just a little bit. There we go, we got rid of that. So looking back at this problem, we have um, 28,394 and 0 0.419. And this unit here is describing the length of line sight, which is in feet. 
So it looks like the length of sight is 28,394.4119 or 419. And there we go. So that's how you can do problem 34. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye, guys.